All right, good day, hi, and welcome. <laughs> That's a cool view. Okay, so guys, well, it's now March. Whoops, don't break everything here. I uh, can't own anything nice. Uh, anyway, uh, okay, wait for it, wait for it. I'm getting in there. It's been one year since I started playing bass, and it's now day five since I got the drums. So hopefully, guys, you can see my Ibanez. Yes, I still have the... Uh, the price tag on it just to drive people nuts. Oh, you got a new base? No, no, I've had it for a year. <laughs> All right, so back this off so I don't break anything. Um, probably not the best way to film it, but uh, so I've been playing bass for a year. So here's how it works for me. When I was a teenager in high school, 13, 14, 15, whatever it was, I took a music class and for Half the year, there was two semesters, so half the year I played uh, bass, the other half I played the drum, it was, you know, band stuff, you know, you know. You know, like stuff really slow like that, right? Uh, big band stuff, so you had saxophones and tubas and whatever, and you had a the drum there. Uh, so, uh, I, I did play the bass, that's where I started with the bass, right? And I found, a, around that time, I found a bass in the garbage, uh, had cement on the headstock, it was sort of like a Fender, uh, jazz or precision knockoff, couldn't tell you what make and model, it was almost unplayable, so I didn't have it long and I really didn't get much out of it. Then, uh, as I got into, uh, bands and stuff like that, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd grab a bass player's bass and... And, and I'd start noodling around on it, but not really a lot of lot of bass playing, right? Uh, the bass I probably played most, except for this, is three basses, uh, four basses. A Guild SG looking bass in the 1970s, I can't remember the model, and the other kind of, uh, their super neck through body bass that they had uh, around the 1970s. Those were the ones from school. And I played though, I, I used to take them, bring those home from, uh, as nobody else was booking them out for the weekend, I'd bring them home. And I'd play on that for about, uh, there's about six months I got on those off and on, maybe once a weekend and then, you know, once a week in class, right? Now I'm now 50, so that's a long time ago. Uh, then my uh, friend at the time, he got into bass and he was a Jacko Pastorius uh, kind of freak, so he ended up getting a Fender uh, Precision bass. And... Um, that's the second bass I played probably more than any other bass because every time I go over to this place, I play my guitar for a bit, I play his bass for a bit, play his guitar for a bit, play his bass. The other bass, uh, I didn't play it that much, but I played it, it was, a, it was a Yamaha or something like that that my friend had, but at that time he had bought the drum kit. He would bought the bass and the drum kit, so his cousin would come over, my drummer would come over, and we'd all have a big old jam session. Everybody would jump on each other's instruments every now and then. Uh, so this happened throughout the 90s while I was in bands. Other than that, really very limited amount of bass playing. So most of my bass playing has been on this Ibanez GO 205W whatever for the walnut dish uh, color. It's a, uh, I think it's a Morente body, maple neck, Jaboda fingerboard, uh, you know, the cheap Ibanez tuners, 22 frets. Uh, is it 22? Yeah, 22 frets. It's got a fat switch, so it's not active pickups or passive pickups, but it, th this part is active. And it just kind of like it, like overblows the tone. Uh, front pickup volume, rear pickup volume, blend uh, uh, your tone, right? Tone volume. Uh, five string. Uh, had I known that the six string version of this was available, for my first bass, I probably would have bought that just because for the extra 50 bucks or 100 bucks. Uh, it would just do more as a tool. So what I like about this bass, well, what I like about this bass is that it's a good starter bass. Uh, what I don't like about this bass is it's a starter bass, so it, it has a lot of limitations. So five string, I'm hooked on five string. Uh, the only thing, I only see myself going to a six string. I've played four strings, but after having a five string, you kind of can't, like having that low, right? But Right there should have told you what the problem of these uh, cheap basses are. 
34-inch scale length, which is too short for five-string, six-string basses. means you don't have enough tension on the B zone. It's hard to play it clean, right? Uh, but I kind of went with what Billy Sheenan was saying. And then there's a bit of my own philosophy that I have. And the reason why the camera's sitting on the, the these drums that I just got about five days ago, uh, getting better. Uh, I don't want to hit the, the, the bass drum because it might knock the camera off. It's a pretty powerful bass drum. It's a pretty big sound coming out of there. Uh, but I bought this mainly for recording, obviously, because it's like getting musicians together is like herding cats uh, in my area. I live in the middle of the country, in the middle of nowhere. So it's hard to get people together. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm a working man. Okay, not this time of year. <laughs> I'm a laid off man this time of year, uh, which gives me all the time to play around with these great instruments and stuff like that. Uh, all this grandiose stuff. So this is my entertainment for the winter. Can't, I don't. I can't afford to go anywhere, but I can afford to make the payments on this stuff, right? This is paid off, by the way. So I got this a year, about a year ago. Uh, somewhere in the middle, middle of the month will be a year. But how's my playing in one year? Well, again, one thing Billy Sheen said, when you get your first bass, live with it for a little while before you upgrade. It was often people upgrade their basses too quickly, and they don't give them a chance, because bass is kind of a bit of a difficult instrument because there's a lot of stretching you gotta do, right? You wanna play big chords in the first position, you gotta do something like that. You wanna do a nine chord, you're doing something like that, right? And being a guitar player, nine chords are kind of my thing. But you don't want to be doing, you know, diminished nine chords, right? But maybe you do, right? So music theory, I'm not bad. What you know, a lot of stuff that from the guitar is translated. Um, I'm more of a three finger guy when I need to be. Uh, two fingers all, all the way. But uh, here's how I can play. So I'm just going to do you some riffs. I don't have an amp yet, so that's why I'm just giving you the this grandiose shot here. And but I'll just give you an idea of what I've what skills levels I have in one year's play. I got a little bit of tapping in there, obviously, uh, all that stuff. I got a little bit of... Yeah, I got some pull-offs, some legatos. Some string skipping. And string transitions are obviously the hardest things for basses, right? Got the triple finger in there, chords. Slapping.
some harmonics. <laughs> so a lot of stuff I could do on guitar, I could sort of do on the bass. Am I, do I consider myself a bass player? No, because my I keep my, it comes to what Paul Gilbert was saying. Uh, here's what you hear in your head, or here's your skill level, here's what you hear in your head, and you're trying to get the two to meet. And I'm getting closer, like there's a lot of stuff I can do. So a lot of the songs I'm writing, I, I can do, uh, no problem, you know. Uh, so, you know, uh, harmonies and stuff like that. I know where the bass needs to be when the guitar is down here. The bass is up here, or an octave higher. So I know where I know where to put the bass. Uh, so that's one great thing there. I know where uh, the biggest skill for the slapping that I don't have down. Like I got that. I got the sort of the basics of it 